Hi. 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 Oh, if you love that 70s show, but you hate those 70s kitchens, you're gonna love today's episode. Hello, and welcome to Laugh Cry DIY, the channel where we craft ourselves out of self-doubt and self-hatred self and the 70s. We are standing here in the kitchen of one of the best human beings on earth. And we are here today to give her kitchen a much needed facelift because it just got divorced and it's ready to get back out there. So we're standing in Rachel's kitchen and she has a common apartment problem, which is that her kitchen is disgusting, hideous, horrifying. She has brown floors, brown wood laminate cabinets. It feels cramped even though it doesn't have to be. So today we are going to lighten and brighten the whole kitchen. We're gonna add paint. We're gonna change the color of the cabinets. We're adding hardware. We're doing a floor treatment. And basically we wanna make it look like two young hot chicks live here and not your dad after his third divorce. So step one, we're gonna wipe everything down. We're gonna take the doors off the hinges and we are going to send these cabinets to get a little work done. These cabinets also have kid locks, um, mostly to keep the ghosts of this kitchen from snacking late at night. My God, look at my arm, am I the ghost? I'm getting ready to take all of the cabinets off their hinges and to make sure that I can keep track of which door is which, I am just simply writing the number and the direction up it goes. Also, because we're gonna add hardware to these cabinets, we're gonna drill holes where they should go. So I'm just gonna put a simple piece of tape kind of where the holes should be. I'm also prepping the walls to paint. Anytime you do that, make sure to remove your outlets. Pro tip, take painter's tape, your screws, drop them, have them go into the refrigerator, and then tape them onto the back of the outlet and then you won't lose them for upwards of 10 seconds. When and where we can, we wanna make inclusive spaces. And in this household, we have a roommate height difference where Chelsea is short, Rach is tall. And so Chelsea, every time she needs a knife, almost kills herself as well as Rachel. So we're gonna move this down and we're gonna put a shelf above it to give them a little bit extra storage space and to prevent Chelsea from committing murder. Even though I'm sure that would make a really interesting podcast. Fun fact, that is a giant magnet. Wow. I mean, Bill Nye. It's so important when you're doing DIYs to stay like super organized. So I always suggest like a little bowl or container to like hold screws. And then I definitely suggest um, knocking the whole container over. Finally time to take the cabinets off. All right, it is day two, next morning. Even though we wiped things down, I realized the cabinets were a little bit too greasy. So we went ahead, we're re-cleaning them this morning. We have put a bunch of degreaser on them and they are waiting to set. We are also soaking the hinges, which have not been cleaned since the Nixon administration. And while we clean the cabinets, I'm sending Rachel downstairs to spray paint the hardware. So I know Katie's channel is called Laugh Cry DIY and that's because I'm the crier. I will cry <laughs> at some point today um, because DIY is incredibly frustrating and that's why I don't do it. So Katie sent me down to spray paint the hardware on my cabinets, which isn't something I knew existed until she said that she took off the hardware to my cabinets. So we're gonna spray paint these gold. I am terrified to do this, but Katie believes in me, so it's gonna happen. So here's, here's said hardware. Um, we have it in an, in an Amazon box. You don't need to get an Amazon box. And then Katie very smartly put the screws in a little dish. And what we're gonna do is pop them into this other box where she has holes. And we're gonna just spray the top since that's all that's gonna be showing. I do already feel like I've ruined this entire video somehow and that I've spray painted these incorrectly. So I went ahead and punched the rest of the screws into the box and now let's hit them with some paint. 
we're gonna hit it with some semi semi gloss. Why would I look it? That's I hate myself. All right, cabinets are wiped down. We're officially ready to start painting, and all we need to do is move this mother bridge. Oh what? Who effortlessly one-handed? Oh my god. I had no idea that was on wheels. Great design. Look. Someone's divorced dad was here. Now we are taping for clean lines. Am I even in frame? Okay. So we're actually gonna use painter's tape to tape a perfect line here. And that way the paint will end there and define the kitchen as its own unique living area. So to make sure that we tape a perfectly straight line, we're gonna use this level. And a level works by making sure your stuff is balanced when that little bubble is right in between those two center marks. Do you see? So I'm actually just gonna use this basically as a ruler to make sure that this is a balanced straight line. I'm gonna draw a line all the way down and then we'll tape off where we drew the line. Marking. Sure thing, Katie. And that is what we call good enough. It's paint time, bitches. <laughs> Today we're going with Flamingo Peach from the Bear Collection. <laughs> it did look more orange on the swatch. However, on the wall, um, it's way more pink. We believe in gendered colors in this home. <laughs> and these are our binaries. <laughs> Peach or pink. Okay, so when you guys are ever gonna paint a room, you need to cut in first which means you do the outer edges and the corners so that your paint roller isn't like going up onto the ceiling and stuff. We did not really tape off the room and that is because of this incredible tool. It is a corner cutter thing and it's basically perfect and it has these little wheels and it perfectly goes and helps cut the corners of your room. I'm just gonna take a little light dab. You guys see? Ooh. Casualties of DIY. Oops. Hear that? Oh, so good. It's that wet ass paint. How is painting going? Oh, it's a sweaty good time. A lot of quad strength happening today. A lot of unexpected quads, a little bit of hands. So pretty. I thought I was too. What are the questions they ask on, on Vogue? Like, so what's your favorite fruit? Pineapple. What's your favorite city? Los Angeles, babe, we're in it. What's your favorite movie? Clueless. What's your favorite company that <laughs> instantly collapsed the minute you got hired? A little place called Defy, babe. Heard of it? <laughs> Didn't think so. Literally watching paint dry vibes. I am going to drill the holes in the cabinets so that we can get our beautiful, gorgeous hardware in. Now, you could try to create your own template like I did in my cane video with my handles. And you know what happens when you do that? It's crooked. Don't look too close. So I found an incredible tool. This is a cabinet hole jig and it's like $6. We already figured out which template we want to use. Um, and in this house, I don't know if you can see, we mark our templates with glittery nail polish. Anytime you're doing any sort of project and you're starting a new thing like drilling holes, always use the cabinet or the piece of the furniture or whatever um, to test it on, use the one that no one's gonna see. This one is far above the fridge and it's like the least visible. So just do yourself a favor and you know, make your mistakes in the shadows. We are using a 3 16th drill bit. Is that how you say it? Did I just learn that most cabinet hardware or maybe all of it is a 3 16 hole? Cool. All right, great news and also moment of hell. The bottom is like a little bit too flush with the bottom of the cabinet. I forgot that these handles overhang a little bit. So we're actually gonna drill another hole and move it up just a little bit. And we're gonna be covering that up so that won't be a problem. Moment of hell. Part two. I went to drill in the second hole into this drawer and I didn't realize that there are metal staples inside this drawer. So we have to figure out how to gouge that out. It's not coming out and I think it's because it's not a staple. So I'm gonna call my good friend Mark to find out what this is. Hello. I'm hitting a DIY disaster. Uh oh, I'm thinking that's a staple. Okay, so Mark says just keep drilling through it and that you'll burn your bit out 
Just something that men say. So I literally just tried to drill it one more time with like this much pressure and it went all the way through. So whatever, bye. They have this knife magnet bar thing. So I just drilled two holes in the wall. And if you guys don't know, drywall is what many things are made out of. And it's trash because you can't really put things into the wall. It just like pops right in and then it falls off. So what you need is this. It's called a drywall anchor. And you get them to fit your screw size and you simply drill a hole in the wall and you hammer these in and you screw into those. A lot of people are scared, but if you can... <laughs> I'm terrified. <laughs> I hate putting holes in my wall. But if you can put a hole in a wall, if you can nail a hole into the wall, then you can put this in and hang things. See, they're in. Katie's okay. been struggling with this magnet that all my knives were on and I, and I never moved it. Okay, it was broken when I took it down and it's broken and it's missing a piece in the middle, which is fine, but it won't even fit back even though it's missing a piece in the middle, so. This is why I don't touch things, I don't ask for anything, I don't want anything, this I don't need anything. This is why I don't believe in science. I bought this shelf at Home Depot and then I bought really cheap brackets and I spray painted them gold. A quick question for you while you do that. Yes. Mary Kill, In Sync, Backstreet Boys, or O Town? In Sync. Mary O Town. Wow. Because they weren't as successful, so you know they're humble. Wow. And then Kill Backstreet Boys. I said what I said. This is my Cinderella moment. I'm currently scraping all the paint that I dropped off my floors. Um, and when I say Cinderella moment, I do mean the one with Brandy. And now we are going to do our little glamour spell on these cabinets. Now, whereas you can pretty quickly and easily paint a wall, painting cabinets is way harder. So this is the magic renter-friendly solution that will blow your freaking mind. Contact paper, baby. So for Rach, we are going to transform the kitchen by doing the top cabinets white, and we're gonna do the bottom cabinets dark green. By doing the top cabinets white, you get a really light, airy, chill feel. And the green is a nice little pop of color that will contrast with the walls. Um, when I told you that we would be contact papering your cabinets, what was your sort of emotional response? I was excited because it was a solution for these hideous cabinets, but I was also terrified because the last time I tried to contact paper something, my grandma died. Literally my grandma died and then I had to contact paper her cabinets and I sent photos to Katie and Katie cried. So what's especially great about Rach's cabinets is that they are really basic and they are plain and they are flat on the front. And this makes them super, super easy to contact paper. Um, if you are someone who has detailed cabinets with like cutouts or with like carvings, there's actually a really genius hack. I'm gonna link it below. I saw it on a YouTube video. Basically all you do is you get simple um, little poster board and you cut it to size and you tape it over the front of your wood so that you have a nice flat surface and then you can contact paper over that. To do the contact paper, tools and supplies you need are an X-Acto knife, contact paper. One thing to note is that a lot of times when you're ordering colored contact paper, they print the batches as you order. So sometimes if you do some and you run out and then you need to reorder, the color's not completely accurate. So if you're gonna do any project like this, always over order. Again, these are like $10 each. You can just return them later. This is a five-way plastic paint tool, but honestly you could use um, like a, a shower squeegee or a stolen credit card. Measure your contact paper according to the drawer. So basically your first peel is the most challenging. The first cut is the deepest. You don't wanna peel off the whole piece. You actually just wanna go like an inch at a time, peel the backing away under it, and then kind of keep that as the guide as you keep going. So as you can see, we have a beautiful crease-free, bubble-free start. You kind of want to hold it up as you go so that you're only touching down what you want to be touching down. Now, for the edges, you can cut in like that and out to the side and then just sort of fold over and in. And there we have a beautiful door. So now we're going to do the floors. And what we're doing is a renter-friendly floor tile. Floor pops. Floor pops. <laughs> floor pops. Floor pops. 
They're very durable, they're waterproof, they're like made for your kitchen floor, but they have a pretty strong adhesive on them. And you can totally get them off with some elbow grease when you move out, but it is kind of nice to make it a little bit easier for yourself. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna grid the whole kitchen floor with painter's tape. You put the tiles over that, and when you need to pull them up, you won't have quite as much residue or much like stuck stuff to have to try to get up when you leave. So Rach is just gonna start going in and laying tiles side by side. Haven't cried yet. The inaugural slice. Looks amazing, looks amazing. This is my nightmare. Look at this. This is the cry point. What a piece of how much is left of this. Oh, we're having fun. Having you know fun. what, we're having fun. We have the doors, beautifully, beautifully contact paper. But of course, this is all going to show, so we wanna make sure that we cover all of this in green too. So we're just gonna cut little strips and do up all the trim. Ooh, look at her, so clean and smooth all the way across. We are about to put on the hardware and hardware is like the easiest thing you can change in your kitchen, in your room, or whatever. Um, these are like really simple, you see them a lot of places, but they just add that little fun pop and touch you guys are gonna love. Hey guys, we thought we would finish everything yesterday, but we got too tired. Katie keeps referencing that we got tired, but what she means <laughs> is that I was throwing a temper tantrum and uh, we needed a break. Our crone bones hurt, so we are starting day three with a um, very exciting aspirin ibuprofen situation. Cheers, babe. Take your NSAIDs. I did take the top cabinets home and we contact papered them white. And I would have done it on camera, but I do feel that um, at my level, I need to maintain a little bit of privacy. So <laughs> that's why. So it's not a competition, but Katie and I are seeing how many hairs we can get stuck in the contact paper. <laughs> Who's winning? I dropped a screw. Unfortunately, it fell between the stove and the counter. Um, so I need to bring in a big tool, which is the T-Mobile brand spatula. T-Mobile, T-Mobile, T-Mobile. Another thing we're gonna do is we have this little um, runner gutter divider thing and she is falling apart. For now, we're just gonna chip her all off and cover that with some more, guess what? Contact paper. By the way guys, Rach and I had ordered this contact paper that looks like backsplash tile. Game time decision, we're not gonna do it. But um, number one, they do make contact paper that looks like tile. And number two, you don't always have to do what the plan says, be a free spirit. Okay, so we are getting close to the end. I have one little surprise for my dear friends, Chelsea and Rachel. Um, I have a friend of mine whose grandmother passed away and she keeps a little altar to her grandmother in her kitchen. And I thought that that was such a cool idea. Both Chelsea and Rachel had people very close to them pass away, um, and that is Chelsea's mom and Rachel's bubby. So I'm gonna use this little shelf, which you might recognize from a former video, and we're gonna make a simple little altar to hang in the kitchen to remind Rachel and Chelsea of the women that they love. These are dried florals. So I sent Rachel to the other room so I could do that, so let's see what happens. <gasps> It's gonna make me cry. <laughs> yes, cry, cry, cry. <laughs> I just want everyone to know that that was Bubby's sixth glass of white wine in that it was her sixth glass that she asked the waiter to bring her because she was unsatisfied with every other glass that she had gotten. Hi, and welcome to day four, five, 10. We're not sure. So today we are gonna do our final styling looks and give you the final reveal very shortly. the most important thing going back up in the kitchen today. It's a Spice Girls calendar from 1999. My roommate found out that the way that the days of the year 2021 are happening are the same that they were in 1999. So right now it's Jerry. It's Jerry month in this house. Today we're going 
going to restore my grandpa's Hanukia to its former glory. Step one, fill a soup pot with water. Make sure there's enough to cover it all. Step two, pour in vinegar at a one to one ratio. Step three, boil that baby. And now we are just scrubbing away. It says China. It's, it says made in China. What if this actually isn't what my grandpa smuggled with him out of a concentration camp like I thought it was? This is the crown jewel of my apartment. And now for the other one. Passed down from generation to generation from Marshalls. Okay, Rach, it's the moment. Are you ready to see your new kitchen? I'm really scared. Okay, ready? One, two, three. Okay, but wait, how much did we actually spend for this renter-friendly makeover? For the handles, contact paper, paint, and tiles, our total was $149. This is my kitchen. I get to cook here. I get to cry in here. All right, guys, well, my kitchen's done. It looks beautiful. I think there's only one more thing to do. Cheers, guys. So make sure to like and subscribe if you like cheap makeovers, if you like cheap women, if you like haunted booze. Exactly. Delicious. I hate gin.